Hi, I'm Dean Kreitzer from Over the Hill Orchards. It's finally spring. A wonderful, exciting time for us uh, farmers. It's also kind of a scary time because we don't know what uh, happened over the winter in terms of damage, either from just cold temperatures or rodents, mice, deer, porcupine, rabbits, that sort of thing. So it's very, you know, we're cautiously optimistic, but it's, it's kind of a scary time when the snow goes away, melts away to see what is left of our trees. So I thought I'd take you on a little tour of, uh, of our orchard just to, just to see what kind of damage, if any, there are and uh, to talk a little bit about it. Here we have a little gopher hole. Uh, there are two kinds of gophers besides the pocket gopher that we have to deal with. Uh, this one's a small, small hole, so it's probably a stripy gopher. And we also have, of course, the Richard and ground squirrel gopher. They don't do a lot of damage, they just eat typically around the hole. Um, they can chew on the bark, but only when it's actively growing in the, during the growing season. So they're not really that bad of a pest. They just, they make a lot of holes in the orchard. See over here, the, uh, the mound of dirt there. And there's actually one over there as well. And, you know, another one here. This is caused by what people they like to think are, are moles, but they're actually called pocket gophers. And what pocket gophers do is they will they stay underneath the ground and they eat all the roots of the plant. So in some years I've come and I've actually lifted up the plant and it's come right out because the pocket gopher has eaten all the roots and there's nothing left to sustain the plant. They're very difficult to control. They're not like uh, you know, uh, gophers, the Richardson ground squirrel go gophers that you can you can trap. These are a lot, a lot more difficult to uh, control because they are underground. So here we have some damage to our cherry trees. You can see the end of this uh, of this branch was cut. And that's actually done by rabbits, and uh, you can tell it's rabbits because the end is very it's very smooth. Their teeth are very sharp, and it's one it's like a scissor. They cut and it's very smooth, whereas deer is a little bit different. It's, uh, they ch actually chew on the branches, so uh, this is definitely rabbit damage. And while you know this, this large tree here, large cherry tree, won't uh, die and probably wouldn't even notice the damage, it's a lot more, uh, I guess, devastating when it's on a smaller tree. So here we have an apple tree that was destroyed by a porcupine. Now, porcupines are the most devastating animals we have to deal with on the orchard. And, and they're nocturnal, so you don't see them during the day very often, although they can climb up into a tree and sleep there during the day, 15, 20 feet, in fact. So uh, you see the damage usually after it's done in the morning on a, uh, on a winter, winter's morning. But now that the snow is all gone, you can see the damage to this apple tree. This apple tree was going on six, seven feet tall, and they chew the bark completely all off. They chew the top off of the tree to get get to the top here. So they chew it here, break it, it falls on the ground, and then they chew the bark down on the ground. So they're very difficult to control and very devastating. So here we have a uh, three-year-old cherry tree, and the mice, you can see the damage down here, and they will actually uh, girdle a tree will basically destroy or kill everything above where they have chewed. If they chew completely around the stem, everything above will die because the, the sap cannot get from the roots uh, to the branches up here because, because of the damage. The only hope for this tree is a sucker from the base here um, will, will shoot up or maybe there might be a bud down here in the uh, undamaged area that will grow and this tree will will continue to grow. Whereas something like this this uh, tree, you can see the damage here on this side, but over here there is there is a whole strip of undamaged bark here. So this tree might might make it. It, it probably will survive, um, but it's still going to set it back quite a bit. So here we have a young apple tree that was damaged by mice again. Unfortunately for apples, uh, they are grafted. They are grafted on a rootstock, so um, all that's left of this apple tree 
underneath here is probably the rootstock. So even if the even if the apple does come back from a shoot or a bud, it won't be it'll be a rootstock apple. It won't be the the apple that you wanted to grow and have fruit. So you know a tree like this would probably cost anywhere from you know twenty to twenty five dollars because it's grafted and it takes uh, takes a lot more um, it's more expensive to to propagate so this apple tree is lost and you know there's 20 20 or 25 dollars gone and you multiply that with all the damaged trees of apples for example and it could be in the hundreds and thousands of dollars so here we are in our apricot seedlings and these guys are really special to me because I have done fruit breeding and these are my creations from crossing a couple of different parents of apricots, some from California, some from Ontario, even Pakistan. So unfortunately the, uh, the mice uh, got these guys too, and uh, the mice guards uh, protected, protected them up until the point where uh, they uh, <laughs> ran out of uh, the mice guard, uh, and uh, so they're damaged. So what will happen to these to some of these seedlings, uh, I have no idea. Will they sprout out another, another uh, sucker or another branch, or will a bud somewhere underneath here start to grow? But all of this growth, this six feet of growth, is all dead. There's nothing I can do about it. And uh, you know, taking care of trees for five years and seeing damage like this happen in the orchard is quite devastating. Growing up in the city like I did, I wasn't prepared for. For Mother Nature, for this kind of hardship that far, you know, farmers face uh, every year, uh, whether you're you're growing fruit like I am, or you're growing you know, wheat or pulses or barley or anything like that, the um, it, it's such a, a stressful occupation when you're at the mercy of Mother Nature and you could lose your whole year's income in a matter of minutes or hours. Hail, you know, frost flooding, everything comes down to Mother Nature. and It's a remarkable... You really have to be somebody special to be a farmer and uh, growing up in the city you just don't understand that until you try to do it yourself. You gotta have a heart, a heart of steel sometimes to push through all the diversity and to be always optimistic even when you're faced with such devastation. It's, uh, it's a lesson uh, that I'm glad I've learned um, and it's really a lesson people in the city uh, should at least try to understand because we're growing your food and we're trying our best to do it and with me being organic I'm trying to do it in the safest and healthiest way possible. It's a hard life but uh, when we do win those are the good days and we we really rejoice at what we can accomplish but there's a lot of tough days